Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 16th, 2022, current around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for multiple tropical cyclones to be forming over the next several days. Where could they go and what to expect for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season? What exactly do you need to know and who could be impacted? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have a couple of things going on today. First of all, in the tropical Atlantic, we have pretty quiet conditions. There are a few embedded tropical waves in this pattern, but overall nice dry, stable air mass over here, not allowing for much to develop at this time. We have hurricane blasts in the East Pacific way out here. This will not be a threat to any land really over the next several days. This is moving out into the open tropical Pacific. We also have Invest Area 93E bringing some rainfall to portions of Central America, but this too seems like a diminishing land concern as it generally heads towards the north and west over the next several days. And then we have Invest Area 93L over here, which does have at least some chance of developing into a depression or storm as it heads towards the Yucatan Peninsula. And then we'll be talking about potential early July activity out here in the main development region. So quick overview here of what's going on again. We have hurricane blasts over here in the East Pacific. We have Invest Area 93E as well with a 90% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone. And then in the Atlantic Basin, we have Invest Area 93L with now down to a 10% chance of development as it heads off towards portions of the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize over the next couple of days. Real quick look here at Invest Area 93E, we can see that there's a well-defined circulation today, which means that this will likely become a tropical cyclone as probably early as 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. this afternoon. Again, this is uh, likely now on the verge of being fully classifiable as a tropical depression or storm. This will be heading off towards the north and west over the next several days, still bringing some rainfall here to portions of coastal Central America, but this is no longer a, a significant land concern over the next couple of days. Then in the Atlantic Basin, we have Invest Area 93L. Now, development chances the other day, we thought this could become a tropical system uh, as this was approaching the Yucatan Peninsula over here. But mostly as far as today goes, the chances have diminished in part because we've had a low level circulation that's been confined uh, over portions of Central America and over the land over the last couple of days. And we have this area of shower and thunderstorm activity well out here, but it's not really consolidated enough. And if we look at the upper level environment, we notice that we have a large amount of these cirrus plumes getting stretched out here. And this is not really a good sign because there's no outflow to speak of down here, which means that there actually is some shear that is being in, being really entrenched within the system. It's being forced onto the system. And that's going to diminish the development chances relatively quickly. We could still have a maybe a weak system that approaches the Yucatan Peninsula over the next couple of days, but overall development chances are beginning to wane. Either way, there will be the threat for flash flooding and severe weather and gusty winds uh, as this approaches the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize. So this is nothing to write, you know, write off. Uh, just because it won't develop into a massive hurricane. Uh, but this is still a, a threat. Uh, there is a pretty real serious threat to portions of the Yucatan Peninsula uh, from this because of the heavy rainfall, mudslides, flash flooding, and the potential for severe weather, including tornadoes, as this begins to approach the area by uh, later in the week and into this weekend. Now, the overview of the tropical Atlantic here, we talked about what to expect for the upcoming season and, and who really could be at risk here this season. Well, a real quick analysis of the sea surface temperatures here that I put together earlier uh, this afternoon, we noticed that the main development region here is all within that above average category. This means that we have above average sea surface temperatures in this part of the world, and that is certainly favorable for development. In the subtropics, we are beginning to notice a cooling trend in the subtropics, which means that we have cooler than normal waters in the subtropical Atlantic compared to the MDR down here. This basically goes to suggest that most of the stability issues uh, have kind of been worked out and we are expecting more upward moving air over the tropical Atlantic and that increases the potential for tropical cyclones to form. And then, of course, in the southwestern Atlantic and the Caribbean, 
uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Water temperatures are stifling hot, uh, as we would expect. I mean, that's normal, nothing new. Uh, but it goes to show that, again, everywhere where land is, basically, there is a real concern uh, for, at least in the water temperature realm, for a strong hurricane to approach land, given these warm waters here. Now, these warm waters, especially in the North Atlantic, they help to create a ridge of high pressure. This ridge of high pressure sets up over the Canadian Maritimes and over, over the high seas of the North Atlantic. And you notice, because again, a high area of high pressure, a big ridge of high pressure basically, uh, creates this clockwise flow, anticyclonic flow. And what this does it basically prevents storms. So our theoretical storm right here, it would prevent a storm from necessarily recurving uh, harmlessly away to sea. Instead, usually this big ridge of high pressure begins to force storms off towards the west here. And we've seen this in years like 2020, 2017, other years where we've seen that. And remember Hurricane Irma was once out here. Hurricane Florence in 2018, same story. Big ridge of high pressure. And that leads to United States and, you know, the, the islands certainly dealing with a higher land concern than average. So who's really at risk for this year? Well, this is also something that I've kind of created here. This basically goes to show that there's kind of three areas uh, for chances, at least of direct concern this year. We have the Gulf of Mexico here. And, and just because the entire Gulf is not highlighted, there is a risk for the entire Gulf of Mexico uh, and the Gulf Coast states and Florida to be impacted this hurricane season. There's also this area off the northeast coast and off the, the southeast coast where we could have some early season or potentially late season activity develop in this region and head out here or kind of come back inland. This is certainly a risk as you know we've seen in, in, in recent years where we, we've had that sort of development and then, of course, down here in the deep tropics, I, I do believe there is a deep tropics risk this year compared to previous years. And I do think this could be, be at least somewhat comparable to 2017 in terms of the threat areas. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be a repeat, obviously, but I do see the islands being under the gun this year. I see Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and the Caribbean being under that concern uh, as we head into later in uh, the hurricane season, of course, by August, September, and October, uh, the you know Caribbean uh, in the Gulf of Mexico will pretty much be wide open for development. And that's why I'm definitely uh, concerned that we could have a few intense hurricanes make its way into the Caribbean and then into the Gulf of Mexico with kind of a, a lesser chance of that happening up here in the subtropical Atlantic. Now, one of the reasons for all of this is because the wind anomalies over the last several days have been generally westerly across most of the tropical Atlantic. This has led to pretty substantial warming already of the main development region, while simultaneously we've had the subtropics under consistent easterly flow, which has definitely led to uh, a weakening of that warm pool in the subtropical Atlantic that's going to lead to less stability issues, more tropical cyclones and tropical storms and hurricanes in the main development region and potentially even the Caribbean this year. Certainly with that warming, that is certainly a trend. The global mean sea surface temperature anomaly, so this basically factors in the entirety of all of the tropical regions and across the globe really. So it's taken that into account. And we notice how the main development region of the tropical Atlantic is already uh, quite a bit above the global mean sea surface temperature anomaly, uh, right around one half, uh, right around one and a quarter to one half degrees Celsius above the long term average. And that certainly is very important because when you factor in the, the rest of the global mean sea surface temperatures, this is certainly the one you want to look at uh, when you're comparing uh, how you know warm the tropical regions are and the rest of the globe. And especially this is important for main development region activity. Off the can sips forecast, this is just another uh, one of the uh, dynamical models that we look for in the climate forecasting here. Uh, all of this blue in here is lower than average wind shear across the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico this year. Uh, this is valid through Sept or for September. Uh, and this is definitely quite a concerning look as this could definitely go to indicate that we have reduced vertical shear. Uh, more potential for tropical cyclones. And that's certainly why I'm starting to raise the alarm bell, especially for the islands here 
and potentially portions of the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean because it certainly does have a feel uh, kind of almost reminiscent to 2017 in some ways. Uh, so this is certainly one of those things that the hurricane seasonal predictions and certainly the 2022 hurricane season predictions are are kind of factoring in at this point. And of course, our new uh, update here will be coming on July 1st, and then we'll have uh, another one then uh, followed up on August 1st as well as we head to uh, in towards the peak of the hurricane season. Go follow me on Twitter at MicroMally1. I post a lot of updates on there about the tropical uh, state and the tropical Atlantic. So if you want to go follow me on there, please do. I also post updates on the Eastern Pacific as well. Also, I have another uh, account. It's called uh, Enhanced Trackers. We do all sorts of updates on there. So go follow at eTrackers underscore. And uh, those will be all the most important information that you need. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And with that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.